Boa tarde, boa noite a todos que estão no, no, no evento. Meu nome é Carlos Siqueira, eu sou o Seus Force MVP e o organizador do evento. E hoje é uma, uma, um evento assim, extremamente importante porque temos uma pessoa, aliás, duas pessoas que são assim, duas uh, celebridades no mundo da Seus Force. E ambos se ofereceram, são duas pessoas extremamente ocupadas, que se ofereceram para participar, para dar uma, uma força para o evento. Então, eu vou fazer as introduções. Aqueles que se sentirem à vontade de falar em inglês, falem. E se não quiserem falar em inglês, podem falar em português, que eu faço a tradução. Fecha essa janelinha aí. Obrigada, pessoal. Tchau, tchau. Tentei tudo. Michael, can you hear me? Yeah, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, I'm gonna make the, the brief introduction and I hope uh, you feel at home. I hope you get, we have a, an environment where you feel very comfortable that you embrace the culture. And for those listening, uh, pessoal, esse é o Michael Gerhard. Ele é o diretor de Salesforce Evangelist. E é uma das maiores assumidades, uma das pessoas assim, mais influentes na comunidade de Salesforce. Uh, Michael, I just mentioned to them that you are the Salesforce director for Salesforce Evangelist, one of the most influential people on the ecosystem. So please introduce yourself and the microphone is yours. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't know, most influential. I see Steve Moe on the call as well. So uh, I think I got some serious competition. Um, but yeah, I am uh, Mike Gerholt, Director of Admin Evangelism at Salesforce. Uh, I like to say it's the second best title next to CEO and you can pick which one of the three now. Uh, is your most favorite. Good. Good to, good to have you. Let me, let me get to Steve. Let me see Steve here. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Steve Mollis, or if you're in the Salesforce Trailblazer community, uh, my alias there is, uh, is Steve Moll. And, and like Carlos, some, uh, I'm a Salesforce MVP, um, self-taught Salesforce admin, a uh, little bit of, of a developer, a uh, little bit of an analyst, a little bit of whatever they need out of me any given day. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, uh, uh, Michael. Pessoal, todo mundo consegue ver a minha tela? Eu tô vendo. Pessoal, todo sim. mundo vendo a minha tela? Sim, sim. Ok, ok. So, Michael, and, and I don't know if you have, have you ever been to uh, MVP of the hours, Michael? I have not. Ok, well, this is a very open floor. Everything goes, everything legal, of course. Everything goes. Uh, all sort of questions that we try to address as many questions as we can. And the questions that we cannot address, we, is this, this is being recorded. Later on, we share the section on YouTube, on the group, on the Twitter, all social media. And we have, this is what we see now is a little PowerPoint that we talk about events. And Steve Moe has been to many of them. He knows exactly the format. And uh, I'm gonna continue uh, a little brief here in Portuguese. And we get back, back and forth between Portuguese and English as we communicate everybody. Is that okay, Michael? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Steve, you good? Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can get my interpreter. Oh, yeah, the dog. Yeah, the dog. Hold on. Okay, pessoal, uh, é, como eu disse antes, esse é um evento que é criado pelos MVPs, não somente para os MVPs, é criado pelos MVPs, mas para todas as pessoas. Então, não existe esse negócio, ah, eu só posso participar se eu sou um MVP ou não. Não, é que foi criado pelos MVPs, a Salesforce é uma coisa independente, a Salesforce não tem uma, uma participação oficial. Então, os links aqui, a data de hoje, né, vocês podem procurar as informações sobre, todas as informações que a gente tem sobre os, os eventos, tá? 
maiores informações sobre as suas forças aqui nesse link. Esse de baixo são os calendários dos eventos da Salesforce, tá? do Customer Success. Aqui são os próximos eventos Dreaming. Esses são eventos criados pela comunidade, ou seja, por mim, por vocês, não criados pela Salesforce. Tá? Então, de 25 a 28 de setembro, teremos o Dreamforce em São Francisco. Hello? Dia 26, que é na metade, na metade do evento, teremos um Campfire, um Salesforce hello, hello, hello. Hello. ao vivo. Hello. Hello. Ok? Então, esse evento, para quem, quem tiver oportunidade de ir no Dreamforce, esse evento vai ser legal, Hello? vai ser ao vivo lá. Hello? Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Rakesh Joint. This, who's this? Rakesh. Oh, Rakesh, yes. Rakesh, thank you, thank you for joining us. Folks, this is Rakesh Gupta. Uh, pessoal, quem acabou de entrar é o Rakesh Gupta, outra era MVP. É, é uma das maiores pessoas assim, que pode te ajudar com o Process Build e outras coisas. Esperamos que ele possa dar umas dicas para a gente hoje. Seguindo a agenda, em outubro tem esse NPSP Day em Washington, DC. Dia 19 tem um Spire East, que é na Inglaterra. Em novembro teremos o primeiro Florida Dream em Orlando, na Flórida. Dia 15, French Torch Dream em Paris, França. 16, Northeast Dream em New, uh, New Hampshire, no Northeast dos Estados Unidos. 1 de dezembro, India Dream em Noida, na Índia. E 6 de dezembro, Down Under Dream em Brisbane, na Austrália. E continuamos aqui esperando que possamos ter um evento do Brasil. Ok? Próximo slide... Se eu conseguir, é, os nossos eventos são a, todas as quintas-feiras, a última quinta-feira do mês. Eu já coloquei que o próximo. Não, o próximo. Não pude descer ainda, não. Estou aqui no meio do. O próximo no, no, no será. Aqui. O próximo será dia 4 de outubro, justamente. Sei lá pegar. É, é, a última quinta-feira de setembro, nós vamos ter o Dreamforce. Então. Eu vou estar lá e muita gente vai estar lá também, então, não, de repente, não vai ter como participar. Tá? Para se registrar para o evento, isso aqui está o link. Nós temos a discussão aberta, é um painel de MVPs e tentamos abordar o máximo de assuntos. Isso está sendo gravado. Por favor, importante, se você não estiver participando, por favor, desligue seu microfone para que não interrompa, ainda mais num, num evento como esse que tem pessoas de, de idiomas diferentes. Uh, para fazer as suas perguntas, levante a sua mão no chat, apresente seu grupo, são todos bem-vindos. E aqui começamos é, o que é mencionado no evento, as coisas que nós vamos discutir. Então, deixa eu voltar para o inglês. Steve, you already know about this, how we do it. And Michael, as I mentioned before, uh, is a free format. Uh, we can start with you. If you want to share anything that you like that is worth it for, for the rest of the group, and we can take from there, or we can take, uh, start to have a questions that people from Brazil and across can have for you as well. Yeah, go, I'd be a fan and go for the question. I don't. Ok, that's ok. Ok, pessoal, aqueles que tiverem alguma pergunta relacionada com qualquer coisa relacionada com Salesforce, por favor, o microfone está aberto para as perguntas. Alguém? Alguém com pergunta? Karina, Júlio, Marcelo, Ricardo, Álvaro? Eu ia, eu ia perguntar o que está faltando para a gente fazer o Dreaming no Brasil. Boa pergunta. Ricardo e Álvaro, vocês que são as pessoas assim, que são bem ativas, com bastante experiência, o que, é que vocês dizem? Álvaro, Ricardo.
Ok, eu, 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 eu tenho que responder. Uh, Michael and, and Steve and Rakesh, uh, the question for Karina was why we don't have a, a, a dreaming event in Brazil yet. So, I leave. you guys haven't started one. Huh? Because you guys haven't started one. Well, yep. that's a good one. So, I, I asked uh, ask Alvaro and, and Ricardo. Ricardo is a CTO for a major uh, Salesforce partner in Brazil. And Alvaro is the CEO of a, 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 a soon-to-be ISV in Brazil. So, Alvaro and Ricardo, qual a opinião de vocês? Por que, que não se tem um evento ainda no Brasil? Pessoal. Álvaro. Desculpa, Carlos, eu estava eu tava escutando você, mas eu estava respondendo o um cliente. Como ah. Eu acho que tem que estar da comunidade, dos usuários dos seus esforços para fomentar isso. Eu acho que aqui no Brasil a gente não tem uma comunidade muito forte de usuários, entendeu? Eu acho que isso que falta unir os usuários, não em eventos... É, comerciais, mas a juntar em eventos que fomentam o uso do seu esforço. Eu vejo dessa maneira. Ok. Álvaro, algo a acrescentar? Karina? Eu ia, é porque eu não conheço como é que é organizado o Dreaming, né? mas é, ele, ele tem algum patrocínio da seu esforço? Ele é feito realmente só é, com, com os usuários, administradores e a comunidade? Ou ele tem algum patrocínio não, a Salesforce, na, na melhor das hipóteses, ela manda é, palestrantes, mas não existe nenhum incentivo financeiro que eu saiba, não existe nada disso. Ela pode mandar pessoal, ela pode mandar as pessoas que seriam, é, né, as pessoas que vão fazer palestras, mas não, não, não mandam, não tem nenhuma ajuda, nenhuma ajuda financeira. Local, essas coisas todas ficam... É... É, são os organizadores mesmo, é, é assim, é, é, é um trabalho tipo de boca de urna, é as pessoas que têm que realmente trabalhar. Entendi, entendi. Ok, cadê o Álvaro? Cadê o... Eu estou vendo o Álvaro, Marcelo, Júlio, aí no grupo... Ok, pessoal, algo mais? Pessoal, está meio tímido hoje. Well, uh, deixa, eu dizer, deixa eu dizer exatamente aqui, ó, tem um, alguma pessoa aqui no chat, alguma informação. É, o Ricardo está colocando. I mean, my, my, Mike would know better than I do, but I would bet that the majority, if not all, of the dreaming events around the world are homegrown events started by the community not um not by salesforce oh that's exactly that's exactly what i said i mean i have been to to southeast dream twice i have been to the texas dream uh, once and it's really a, a labor of love it, uh, it yeah. is like uh, you have to go in there you have to 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 raise you have to organize you have to delegate you have to find the sponsors it's not an easy task Uh, and the thing is that, you know, I, I mean, I'm a Brazilian myself. I'm not going to shoot myself on the foot. But it has to be a cultural thing that, you know, it, it cannot be a hand-me-down. You cannot be, all oh, Salesforce is United States have to, to, to help us. Well, I know that Salesforce locally will help, will send uh, people, local people for Salesforce Brazil. But that's about it. Anything else has to be pretty much for the local community to do it. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I... They're starting the, 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 they're starting the very first New England dream in this fall. And I've been just barely involved in some of the planning sessions. Um, and it's, it's amazing the amount of work that goes into trying to build one of these things. Yeah. Um, 
the, the finding a venue that can accommodate the people, um, people who have to travel to get to the, to the venue catering. I mean, it just, and that's just like the bare bones logistics, Never mind the actual content that goes into it. It's, I, yeah, you have to sign, you have to do the logistics, you have to, to open for, for sessions, you have to receive the sections, you have to vet the sections, background oh. checking, content, you know. Oh, lining up partners. I mean, it's just, it just, I, 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 I was in, I was in shock. I mean, I, <laughs> I always had an idea that, okay, this is not, you're not planning a poker game here. You know, you don't call up five buddies and tell them to bring a couple of, couple of bucks with them. Um, but when I actually sat in on a meeting and saw what they had to deal with, uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, it's almost like you, you're setting up like, uh, a, 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 a small company or a nonprofit. You, you, you got to have a treasurer. You got to have uh, pe- You, you got to delegate. It's, a, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. a lot. Michael, have you ever been approached for, for to, uh, regarding help on uh, organizing a dreamy event? Uh, I have not. And, and as being part of Salesforce, we really love that they're a community led event. Um, we try not to take that spirit away. We're very happy to come in, participate uh, in terms of providing content and really support the community in that way. But uh, the, the Dreamin' events are really something unique to, to Salesforce in that the community drives them and kind of puts them together on their own. Uh, so I know the Midwest Dreamin' is, I think, four user group or maybe five user group leaders that get together uh, and it, it's kind of, you know, one of the really bigger ones, you know, Steve Northeast Dream and I've got Mark that'll be up there giving a keynote, but uh, yeah, there's a, one of the secret recipes is, is that the community will get together on its own and kind of put something like that together. And I know that Holly's team and the community team have packages that support, but uh um, and they come in different sizes for, for dreaming events. But, um, you know, what's unique is you get to make them your own. They're not a Salesforce event uh, because if obviously if Salesforce is going to do an event, um, we have business reasons behind doing something like that. And we can be a little heavy handed, whereas a, a dreaming event you can do fun stuff. Like I was at Midwest Dreamin' and, you know, they had a big demo jam and, and they kind of had different things that go on that, that wouldn't be uh, necessarily at a, at a Salesforce event. Okay. Thank you both. Pessoal, e, 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 traduzindo para aqueles que não, que não pegaram, a, 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 como o, o Steve Moe e, e, e o Michael disseram, é, é uma coisa que tem que iniciar das pessoas. A Salesforce ela manda, como já respondi, que eu estou colocando aqui, né? Ela manda é, palestrantes, pessoas que podem fazer apresentações e tal, mas é somente isso. Então, enquanto não existir aquela cultura, aquele pensamento de vamos fazer, não vai acontecer. Não vai ser uma coisa de alguém chegar e se eu fosse falar para vocês, ah, vamos fazer o Força Brasil, que eu já até usei esse nome, Força Brasil Podia ser no Rio, podia ser em São Paulo, porque são duas grandes capitais, podia atrair o turismo, mas tem todo um, um, um trabalho que a Salesforce ajuda assim, com ideias, mas tem que ser uma coisa autêntica. Tá? Não é uma coisa que a Salesforce começa, tem uma coisa que começa da comunidade. De acordo, uh, Karina, concorda? Não, eu concordo e... Eu vou falar em português, porque você vai ter que traduzir de novo, né? Tá. É, e a gente é um pouco tímido, você sabe disso, né? Culturalmente, culturalmente falando, é, na, na realização desses, desses eventos, né? Tanto no compartilhamento das, das, do conhecimento, né? Quanto em termos de mobilização e patrocínio, né? Quando não tem um interesse comercial envolvido, é um pouco mais difícil, eu entendo isso. Como essa cultura é mais... É, disseminado existe, está mais presente em outros lugares, 
É, aí eu pergunto o seguinte, se a gente pode, talvez, participar desses dreamings que, que ocorrem, por exemplo, aí nos Estados Unidos ou em, em outros lugares, né? Já que aqui realmente é... Por enquanto, né, ainda é um pouco difícil, né? É, a gente esperar que isso vai acontecer aqui. Não, então, sim, mas esse, esse, esses eventos, esses eventos, deixa eu dizer simplesmente, uh, Steve, Rakesh and, and, and Michael, Karina is asking if since they cannot, they don't have it yet in Brazil, if they could come to the events in the United States. Of course they could. People yeah. have their yeah, they open arms. Come on down or <laughs> come on up. Come on up. There's, there's, there's no restrictions on, on the events that you can attend. Same with Salesforce events. Feel free to go to any, any of the Salesforce World Tours worldwide. Um, of course, that's on your nickel or, or your company's dime provided. Well, yeah, and, and Carlos, Carlos, uh, this is Alvaro. Uh, you can forget that Brazil, it's a, it's a kind of continental country. So it's not so easy uh, for people from, from Minas Gerais, for example, or the, the South area, Rio Grande do Sul, uh, they, they join uh, this kind of event, okay? So it's a, it's a problem for us uh, because Brazil is a large country. And, uh, but I'd like to, to mention uh, uh, regarding uh, development, uh, develop, uh, development, development subjects because uh, actually we don't have a lot of information about this kind of thing, okay? In Brazil, if you look for the community, uh, if you look the, the kind of uh, uh, issues or doubts that people are posting, uh, you cannot see uh, a lot of things regarding uh, uh, development, okay? Regarding DX or, or APEX or things like that. Much more focus on, on functional uh, subjects and, and even in terms of uh, reports or things like that. Simple things, okay? It's something that uh, I think we need to, to improve here, to stimulate here, uh, to, to people from, from development area join because now we are working, as you know, work with uh, DX and then building uh, components, uh, lighting components, and uh, we are facing a, a lot of difficulties uh, because we, we don't have nobody here to share uh, information regarding this kind of thing, okay? So, Pay attention, uh, the message is just uh, to pay attention to, to development uh, as well, not only for functional uh, situations, okay? Yeah, okay. We, we end up going uh, in English and searching in the communities in English. Uh, I think a lot of people here in Brazil don't speak English, so this is a, a barrier, right? And we end up going uh, to other communities to, to look for information and, and try to do a, a, a good job here in, in Brazil. And, and the same as Alvaro, I was starting an initiative regarding IoT and I had the same problem. We, we don't have any material in Portuguese or we don't discuss this kind of thing uh, here in Brazil yet. And, and I think we could you know, put a, a little bit of effort in translating some documents or cases or videos or whatever uh, to Portuguese so we could uh, incentivate people to, you know, try new technologies or, or do things in a, in a better way or, I don't know, have, an, have other ideas or other solutions, right? Ok, excelente. Deixa eu só concluir aqui em português, eu vou traduzir para o inglês. Folks, I'm going to say something in Portuguese and I'll get back to English. Uh, uma das coisas que eu gostei o que o Álvaro falou, a, a realidade é a seguinte, a Karina é uma mulher, tá? ela veio sozinha o ano passado para o Dreamforce, do bolso dela, não teve empresa para pagar, ela veio com a cara e a coragem e fez a certificação dela no Dreamforce. Então, se uma pessoa sai do Brasil, como a economia do Brasil consegue fazer isso nessa distância toda, para mim, não existe o porquê de não ter uma comunidade do Brasil. Ponto um, número um. Número dois, o Brasil é um país continental? É. O, a Índia também é, é mais pobre que o Brasil. Os Estados Unidos é gigantesco e você não precisa fazer um, um evento 
para o país inteiro. Você faça um dream São Paulo, você faça um dream Governador Valadares, você faz um dream Afogados do Engazeiro no interior do Piauí, mas faça. Comece, porque se vocês não começarem, ninguém vai fazer para vocês. Essa é a história. Tá? Essa é a história. Deixa agora eu voltar para o pessoal do inglês. Folks, what I was saying here, it looks like I got a little excited here, is the fact that Karina is a lady from Brazil. She came last year to Dreamforce all by herself for her own pocket, nobody paying for, went in there, took the, 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 the certification for admin and passed. So what does that mean? If you have determination, if you have a focus, you get it. You don't wait for a hand-me-down. You don't wait for you to do it. It's the same of organizing a regional uh, dream events in Brazil. You do it one in Sao Paulo, you do one in Rio de Janeiro, you're doing whatever city you have it, which you have to start. If you don't start it, nobody's going to hand on to you because the people that be doing already, they never get it, they never got in the first place as an easy one. So that's the message that I wanted to convey in English. Now, going back to what Alvaro was saying, I totally agree with him that there's a, there's a need in Brazil because uh, it's not just in Brazil, it's in Latin America. And, and Michael, I'm talking specific to you because you have uh, the powers at least to be an influential on this. Uh, documentation, anything that's content is pretty much in English. And I have seen progress, okay? I give it to you guys. I have seen progress. But the bulk of the, the documentation is still pretty much in English. And there are people like in Brazil, that don't speak English, don't speak English. There's a people in Latin America, don't, you know, they speak much Spanish. I knew, I know about people in Germany and around the world that don't speak English. And everybody outside the United States, if you have a, a certification for admin in US, it's 60 minutes. Guess what? If it's outside of the United States, you have an extra 20 or 30 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, exactly because of the language. So, That's something that uh, the right ears at Salesforce needs to pay attention for. That's the community. Thirsty to learn the technology, to embrace the technology, but it doesn't have the tools to do it. Michael? Okay. Um, so I, I know our, so our Salesforce certification teams uh, and Trailhead recently merged within the last year, which is uh, information not, not really necessary, but relevant to my answer. Um, and I know they're actively working on, you know, bringing uh, certification training uh, Trailhead modules to different languages. Um, you know, they, they have a roadmap for that. There's, there's definitely, you know, consideration outside of just, uh, yes, it's in English, getting it in Portuguese and, and definitely in, in many other languages as well. So um, we hear it. Well, as I, and, as I, and as I mentioned, I, see, I have seen the progress. When I started in beginning of 2016, Trailhead, I couldn't see anything in Portuguese. Nowadays, when I put something on the, on the Brazilian community, I have the choice to go down there in the bottom right side and pretty much pick PT for Portuguese And, and put the material in there. But uh, it's a work in progress, but you know, as long as Salesforce is aware of the issue, I think we're on the right track. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, that, we're, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, yeah. I, I was going to say we're, we're, we're definitely around the globe, uh, and we definitely have offices you know, throughout the world. Um, and so we, we hear you. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a resource issue, and it's something that we're very excited to get everything you know, translate it as fast as possible. And with that, we also want to do it right, you know, so uh, technical documentation, you want to make sure that you have that documentation done and done correctly. Um, the other thing I would say, and, and Carlos, I think you, you talked to this as well, is a lot of this is, is really a, a cool opportunity for the community uh, to bring that uh, to its own. So uh, for many years, and Steve can attest to this as well, Salesforce talked nothing about admins. Um, there was no admin anything outside of a sysadmin profile. Uh, and 
on my own nickel and my own time. I wrote blog posts. I started a podcast on my own. I went to speaking events. You know, Steve and I spoke at uh, Dreamforce to you in Florida. I flew down there on my own nickel, stayed on hotel on my own nickel um, because I was passionate about bringing that message to other people and gaining that awareness, right? So, uh, you know, it's definitely one of those where the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Uh, so fast forward 10 years later, and, and now we have admin marketing. There's an admin keynote, which I, I just got out of the meeting for. Uh, we have an entire admin meadow at Dreamforce. Um, so, you know, some of that is the, the more you can do, you're also benefiting the community, um, but you're also kind of raising that awareness, right? As opposed to sitting back, hoping it'll come. So uh, maybe Correct. that I resonates, agree with I don't you. know. Uh, Rakesh, yeah, I like to ask Rakesh because Rakesh is, even though living in the US, he comes from India and uh, Rakesh, what, what, are your, what are your points on that? What's your comment? I would say like, uh, this is a great point by Michael, sir, that community has to come up in the front and then do something by their own. Many people, one of the MVPs and people comes to me and say that they want to translate my blog for process builder. It's very good. So into Germany, German, and then I think Korean. So I give my permission. So, okay, you can go ahead and you can translate everything into your language because I don't have anything to translate. So I really appreciate those people if they come in front and at least do something by their own for other people so everyone gets benefited. Like I started Mumbai user group seven years back when no one is in India much know about the Salesforce and ecosystem, how things work, development and admin. So no and, 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 and Michael Michael mentioned a good point in there that it's not yeah. just translating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously this is it's not just translating. It's it's all about like you can start coming contributing and you can take the lead position because if there is no one so if you wait for anyone then it's too late no no you know the point that i was making i mean michael mentioned at the translating stuff i mean back in in, in march uh michael knows how broadcast you might know michael you know kelly walker right i sure do yeah and if, of course you guys know michael or well i've been working with the kelly walker since uh june um Ju july of last year that's how we created the Lightning program. And she said, Carlos, can you translate uh, a, a PPT for me for Lightning from, from English to Portuguese? And I say, sure, you know, give me a weekend and I do that. Well, it was 80 pages, eight zero, okay? So it wasn't a weekend. It took me good, more than a week because it's not just translating. You have to see the technical terms. And I ended up doing, ended up, I'll say, hey, if I'm into this, I'm going to do it well. And I did. But, uh, Carlos, Carlos, this, uh, this is over. Uh, I'd, I'd like to mention that uh, there are uh, certifications that we don't have in, in Portuguese. Uh, so uh, I think that Trio had it's absolutely fantastic. I'm a master fan of that. And uh, I, I try to stimulate people here just to use Trailhead and don't worry about uh, translation. Uh, try to use in English, okay? because in this situation, it's, uh, you, you can learn Salesforce and you can learn English uh, on the same place. So it's uh, something that I, I, I'm always trying to stimulate people. Uh, Karina knows uh, very well this situation because uh, uh, we have a project together and uh, I'm used to working only in English, and sometimes I need to 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 switch to Portuguese, and it's a it's a, it's a problem for me because I don't know a lot uh, the, the the commons in Portuguese. The translation sometimes it's uh, uh, it's terrible. It's not uh, it's not what uh, we expected as well. So uh, it's something that I'd like just to to, to pay attention. And uh, is that uh, we, we have uh, a lot of certifications, not in Portuguese, only in English. So it's, uh, I think that's a good idea if you can uh, stimulate people. I don't think that it's uh, a strong barrier, uh, but 
uh, I'd like to, to mention that uh, we still have some, some certification that uh, we don't have in Portuguese. So uh, I'm always stimulating people to, uh, to use Trailhead uh, even in English because can take advantage and learn uh, about English as well, okay? So it's something to, to mention about that. Yeah. Uh, just, just so you know, uh, we end up uh, being fluent in classic interface lightning because they change and you, know, you have to know both. Yeah. And you have to know everything in English and Portuguese because clients here, they want everything Portuguese, of course. Yeah, I mean, yes. like, stop, we end up like uh, you know, knowing four different stuff. Yeah. For the same thing, right? I mean, uh, I would like. I, I'm sorry, Kanz. I would like to to, to ask something, because um, Alfred does a lot of modules every time, and and I do some, and um, uh, at least one per week or two modules per week or maybe more. But sometimes I do it in Portuguese just to see um, the translation, right? And I and I see some points of improvement, some words that are quite not correct. And I would like to contribute and to suggest another word, another term, another way of, way of saying these things. And it would be great to have this channel uh, between us and, and, and the Trailhead team, uh, maybe here in Brazil, I don't know if they are here or, or there in the US, but I would like to make the suggestions if possible. Okay. I, 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 Steve, I know that you have something to say. Hold on, hold that, uh, uh, you, you come next. Karina, what's happening is any, any trailhead, you have a little icon in there to, for, for the help. You can open a case and, 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 and open a case and pretty much say, hey, this here, this translation here, does a, it's, not a, it's not done properly. So this way you, you make a contribution so they, they, you know, and you can say, hey, this here was translated in a poor way, this, and you can provide the proper uh, uh, meaning of the word in Portuguese. All right. Okay. Okay, Steve, you you had a point in there. Go ahead. No, no I I mean I you, just you you totally hit the nail on the head. Um, I mean I I I had a friend from uh, from Colombia, and uh, we would you know when we'd be riding the train, and you'd see you sitting on the train, and you see the signs ab above the seats, and she would just like constantly point out how horrible. The Spanish was. She's like, nobody talks like that. Nobody would ever use a <laughs> sentence like that. She goes, that was like written by like a three-year-old from Mexico knows how to speak better than that sign does. That you know, and unfortunately, you know, not all of us, but a lot of Americans think that the whole universe revolves around the United States and we're lazy. <laughs> so rather than us make the effort to like learn the proper way to, you know, really converse with someone in another tongue, it's like, no, 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 they can come to us. They can, they can, they can just speak to me in English. And if I don't understand what they're saying, I'll just repeat the same words again and again and again in English in a louder and louder voice. That's the, you know, it's, it's sad, but that, for a lot of Americans, that's the way we think that if we just yell something in English over and over and over again, that that will be a, a, a suitable substitute for uh, understanding another person's native tongue and actually translating it for them. Well, it's, it's the, hard, we're, we're jerks. We're, we're Americans. We're, we're, we're the jerks of the world. <laughs> well, Steve, I, I really appreciate you being candid on that because if I would say something like, like that, people say, who the hell are you? You barely speak English. Yeah, I better speak English. The problem is I can take you, Steve Mo. I can take Rakesh, and I can take Michael. All three of you excellent on your line of work. I put you there in a bar in Brazil to talk to 100 users. If you don't speak the language, you're going to be in there looking in here. You're going to be like, a, you know, a hole in the wall. Yeah. You know, you're going to be a paperweight. That's why, and, and Michael is, is, is my witness because I hit him every once in a while about 
admin evangelist for Latin America or, or stuff like that. The problem is it's not just speaking the language. It's a culture. You get introduced to a Brazilian lady today, she's going to shake your hand. Tomorrow, you see her, her again, you might get a kiss on the cheek. And Karina is on the line. She can confirm that. I told you this, Steve. You know that. You yeah. know, and that's, that's the culture thing. That's a, that's, that's, that's a subject to talk about another time. But all revolves no. in the culture aspects of having no. the proper translation. And I like to believe that Salesforce has not done that yet because they've been very careful so that the translation doesn't get lost. Yeah. And then the content, the intellectual, the, in, the, intele the property in there gets lost. And then there will be an issue. Would you agree, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Michael? I mean, yeah, I think, um, so, you know, just one thing to, to kind of mention, talking a lot about the hurdles that we see. And um, there's always two ways to look at everything. You can look at the hurdle or you can look at the opportunity. Um, and I forget who mentioned it that said they, they know uh, English and Portuguese uh, and, and can do both in Salesforce. Um, you actually have twice the opportunity that I do. So I am limited as an evangelist to really only be able to connect with those that know English. Uh, I know a little bit of German, um, uh, but, but in terms of work, in yeah, uh, guten, uh, um, but, but in terms of, uh, you know, being able to, uh, work for companies or work with companies in, in, you know, the U S or English speaking countries, as well as, you know, Portuguese or Spanish speaking countries, if you know, both, uh, that's a huge opportunity. Uh, and I, I would also say one of the great things about our community and our Ohana is that they spread that opportunity to everyone. Um, and so you have a, you have an opportunity. The community is, is exponentially larger than Salesforce. Um, so if every Salesforce employee worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we still could not keep up because there's so many more in the community than, than there is of us. Right. Um, and so you have that opportunity to help spread that to more people. Uh, and, and really the goal for us is to kind of just plant that seed or kernel, get that information out there, much like those dreaming events. You know, we were limited in staff and, and we try to do some amazing events. And really the community kind of reached out and said, we're going to fill in these gaps because we see them uh, and, and we fully, you know, we embrace them and, and we, we love that they can kind of do that. So I think that's one of the things that makes it very unique about our community and, and just the culture of, of being in the Ohana. Uh, it would be nice. You know, that's, that's a thought here about to have a trail, trailhead, a badge about culture, about different languages, you know. Uh, yeah. I agree in a way what Alvaro said that, you know, if you take the opportunity to, to do trailhead in English, you are pretty much learning two things at the same time, that is good. But that's something that it needs to be, people have to have that in initiative. I don't think the, the rest of the world can expect, oh, I'm gonna put this in English and they're gonna have to learn in English because they're gonna learn English. I mean, few of us like Alvaro and myself and Karine and others uh, have that initiative to practice the language. But there's gotta be a way to have uh, the content, you know, uh, uh, readily available in other language. Uh, I want to hear to Ricardo, Ricardo Rosario. Is Ricardo still on the call? Ricardo. Ricardo, um, Ricardo, dois. Ricardo, você pode falar? Eu acho que o Ricardo não está conseguindo falar. He, he's, uh, he's right on um chat. He, he's tá, in, não, uh, ele está escrevendo. Eu, yeah, eu, eu, yeah. eu ia perguntar. Yeah, Rakesh is, tell, is, 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 is mentioned. Pessoal, o Rakesh está dizendo que o Google Translator talvez é uma coisa que ele usa, o, Gru, o Chrome Translator. Uh, yeah, esse é bom, mas ajuda. 
né? mas uh, o objetivo seria realmente ter um, um documento disponível pela Salesforce que já fosse no, no, no idioma. Uh, Steve, Rakesh, Michael, uh, Rakesh is, is sharing here that you use Google Translator. I use all the time. Uh, Chrome Translator is good as well. But ultimately, I think it's a work in progress to have reliable content in other languages. I think we all agree with that. And I think we, we're making progress. I, I Next. Think probably across the board for a lot of companies. Yeah, I mean, I remember back in, in the 80s, I mean, you, you only have this very thick uh, IBM manuals in plain English, and IBM was the first company to say, we'll never translate anything because it can get lost in translation, and they never did. I left Brazil in 1988, and every single manual about IBM, COBOL, CICS, all the old veteran stuff, legacy, plain English, and they never made a translation. So we had to learn the hard way. Pessoal, yeah. Alvaro. And Carlos, regarding, regarding translation, it's uh, Karin and, 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 uh, and myself, we, we work on a project recently uh, where we, we spend a lot of time you know, working with community partner license. And it's funny because uh, there is, a, uh, there is a, uh, an option to use a language, Portuguese language. Uh, everything is in Portuguese, amazing except the, the setup. Setup, it's, uh, it's only in English. So uh, it's funny because the user asked us, oh, how about setup? Why is why it's in English? It's not in Portuguese. And they said, oh, I think that Salesforce forgot to, to translate this part. And it was, it was something uh, a little bit funny. But uh, I agree that, uh, that language is about here. But uh, in my point of view, I think that we have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, other uh, issues uh, or points that we can improve in terms of uh, use Salesforce in a, in a better way. Okay. Okay. Obrigado, Álvaro. Pessoal, mais algum comentário? Nós temos mais 10 minutos. Mais alguma pergunta? <coughs> Júlio, uh, do you like to talk a little bit about uh, about uh, your experience with DX, uh, because uh, Julio is working with DX and, uh, and he, he loves a lot of things and uh, is still missing some, some, some points that can be uh, improved uh, in, the, in this arena. I'm talking about uh, development, component development. Julio? No, actually, um, I'm working with the GX, like Alvaro said, and uh, I have a, a little experience in Salesforce right now. I, I'm still learning, uh, learning from Trailhead. And when I arrived in, in Salesforce environment, I, I didn't understand some things because it's quite different when you're developing Java or .NET, like uh, where is the compiler? Compiler is the, in the cloud. So there is some things that are great from, uh, from recently deliveries from DX, but th there is some points that can't uh, let me be more uh, performatic in, in development. So I, I think the Salesforce DX has a, a a long way to to let the developer uh, more comfortable with some so, uh, in this kind of development. Okay, but I I am I am learning. And, and yeah, but uh, but Julian just two months uh, he's uh, <coughs> he he got to develop a very interesting. A very interesting lightning component that uh, uh, we are starting to, to, to work here in Brazil and, uh, and, and move to clients because uh, we strongly believe that there are a lot uh, amazing space uh, in terms of uh, components, lightning components, uh, interfaces, and things like that. Uh, we are so delighted about 
about the new the new version the, the lighting uh, so it's something that uh, uh, we can explore as well Carlo is something regarding uh, the, the, the advantage because uh, I still face a lot of people worried with uh, some 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 aspects of lighting uh, so it's a uh, but on the other hand uh, I can see a lot of people moving to, to light and especially the management because they have uh, beautiful new styles in terms of the of dashboards and things like that so it's another point to explore it's the uh, the, the, the lighting the lighting world okay okay good overall uh, I'm gonna share here what uh, what I got here from the from the from the chat I mean Rakesh is like you and me uh, Alvaro we both you know English is not our native language and Rakesh is saying that he started he, he started to speak English until he was uh, he was 21 so he's 22 now so he's been speaking English for just one year I'm just kidding <laughs> so, <laughs> so but the, the point is that he started at 21. I started at, for, for real, I started at 28 and, and came to US. And as Michael said, this is an opportunity here. And this opportunity not just for, it was for Rakesh, it is for me because as Michael said, I'm a, I'm a fully trilingual, very comfortable in all the three languages. But it's a big opportunity as well for you, Alvaro, for you, Karina, for you, Julio, because you can be, the ones driving these things. You cannot wait for things to happen in Brazil as far as a communities or, or, or getting material ready available in Portuguese. What you need to do is continue to do what you're doing, relying heavily on trailhead, get involved in the community because the community will get back to you, the community will embrace you, and the community will never discriminate you because your proper or not proper English. You go to the trailhead community, you ask, you get the answer. Okay, that's how I learned, that's how I'm still learning. And as far as lightning is concerned, that's the lightning is the way to go. Okay, there's no looking back in other things. And if you, if you really involve in lightning, it's not going to be English or Portuguese that's going to be prevent you to succeed in that. You just have to keep going, keep focus, get plugged in the community. Yeah, and Carlos, uh, I'd like to mention one, one thing. I'm so excited to, to, to meet you on this call, uh, Steve and, uh, and, and Hakesh. Sorry, Michael, because uh, I'm talking uh, more in terms of technical aspects, because those two guys, uh, they, they have uh, contributed a lot. I have learned, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm working a, a lot with Flows and Builder and Hakesh. Uh, I have learned a, bot, a, a lot from, from his, his, his website and his uh, posts and Steve as well I'm always facing when I'm asking some some troubles I'm, I'm uh, I think more than a, 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 a thousand times I found some 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 contribution from Steve so uh, I'm so excited so happy to, to meet those guys uh, on the, this call and uh, very very happy to, to uh, just to say to, to both that uh, you are fantastic and uh, we have a, learned a lot from your posts, okay? This is just great, to... but let me do justice here. I mean, uh, Rakesh and Steve, they live on their own planet, but don't let it fool you. <laughs> Michael, Michael, <laughs> yeah. Michael was a user before he came to Salesforce. Back on the day, Michael, as he mentioned before, he was, he was an admin, he was like doing things from his own pocket. We have an expression in English like a talk the talk, walk the walk, Michael does it. Don't you, Michael? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah no, I, I, so first of all, uh, no hard feelings. Uh, Steve can build uh, reports for days and probably has forgot more about formulas than I actually know. Uh, but yeah, 06 to all the way through 2014 for eight years, I was an admin uh, at a company with 500 users uh, and ran the blog and ran a podcast before joining Salesforce. Um, and I'd say, you know, in the last four years, uh, while I don't do administrative work, you know, we're still, I'm still hands on the product. Um, we were for the, for the admin keynote, um, my team and me have built all of the demos. 
Uh, and if you've ever built a demo, you know it's almost as much work as building a, a full out production org every single time. Yeah. Uh, and same with all, all of the demo booths that you'll see at Dreamforce. Um, so if you go to the Trailhead Zone, and I, I don't know if anybody on the call will be at, at Dreamforce, uh, all of the demos in the Trailhead Zone, all of those standing booths that you go to uh, for the developer or admin were built by the 13-person the evangelism team that I'm a part of. So we're, we're still very much hands-on the product. I think you probably learned from us. You just don't know it because exactly. it's all labeled Salesforce now. Exactly. Yep. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. You know, let's, you know, credit where it's credit is due. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't going to say, but I'm going to say anyway, uh, for you guys in Brazil, uh, UPI, the, the, the company where, where Ricardo Rosario is a CTO, is, is has an initiative of creating videos and materials, translating pretty much uh, things from English and created their own. Is like uh, it's not even in beta yet. It's, I would say it's in alpha. They do it internally, and uh, Karina, Alvaro, Julio, pay attention to that because that might be something that comes handy. Okay, all the training that that you don't find today in English, you could be you know sometime next year you can have that uh, in, in Portuguese. With that note, pessoal do Brasil, eu gostaria de agradecer. Se vocês têm algum último comentário, porque estamos na hora de terminar o evento, algum comentário em português ou inglês? Não, Carlos, just to say thank you very much for 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 this the, the opportunity to to meet those guys and uh, it's very very interesting. I like very much this opportunity. Okay, folks in English, I like to thank you all. And in closing, I'd like to go from Rakesh to Steve, and last but not least, Michael, for your final thoughts, anything that you, you know, you, you take away from this or you want to share with us. Rakesh? I would say take anything as an opportunity. Yeah, the language is a roadblock, that's what, but again, everything comes as an opportunity in life. Take as an opportunity, that's it. And thanks for the opportunity to share my knowledge here. Thanks so much, Rakesh. Steve. Uh, yeah, you know, first, thanks, thanks to everyone for, uh, for the opportunity to, to join in. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I hope, hope to see some of you in real life uh, at Dreamforce next month. Uh, and, you know, and hopefully, you know, who knows, next year or the year after that, maybe... Uh, you guys, you know, invite me down for uh, the first um, Dream in Rio. Or, Bahia. Uh, <laughs> Rio. I think in Bahia is better. Uh, yeah, we um, can debate that. Steve, yeah. we, we can debate that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Steve. Michael, okay. uh, final comments. Anything that you walk away from this event? Anything that you can add? Yeah, no, I think it. I think it was great um, and I appreciate everybody taking time out of their day to do this. I mean, I, I don't know uh, necessarily uh, everybody's schedule. Um, and I think kind of to echo what, what everyone said, you know, opportunity is, is what you make of it. And if you have two opportunities, you can, you can either look at what's possible or you can look what's in your way. And uh, I, I always tend to look at what's possible and, jump over the hurdles just to get there, so. Ok. Uh, with that said, pessoal, obrigado a todos, uma boa noite. Folks back in US, thank you very much for, for, for your time, and you all have a great one. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. See you. Bye -bye. See you. Come on, people.